Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I think we're going to focus on activities around Kerbin, the Moon, and Minmus. We do have Ike stuff and Eve stuff, but Elon is sitting there around Minmus. And we do have another rescue to do around Kerbin itself. And perhaps we can pick up some contracts. Finish construction of a rover on the surface of the moon. I don't understand this. Uh, you can view the rover in the tracking station, evaluate the missing parts, and make a plan to move it to the target waypoint. Well, I've never done anything like this before. So we'll need to send an engineer to attach part. Uh, people have been begging me to figure out the whole attaching parts thing that they've added to the game, and I haven't figured that out yet. So I guess we should... And then we have to position a satellite in a polar orbit of Minmus. So that's the thing. We could just drop it off on the way to Elon, I suppose. And then a surface outpost on the moon that facil that supports 17 kerbals. Well, we if we end up having a rover there, maybe that would be a good thing. Okay, fine. We'll land an outpost like that, maybe. And uh, we'll see how all this gets put together and now somebody mentioned that they wanted to know what this component was given it's 5.4 meters um i'm not that curious <laughs> uh 5.4 meter 5.4 meter and one ton i mean it seems like it's like some kind of fairing that's already been preset you know instead of just being the base or it might be the but the fairing would be too small, so I was thinking the engine uh, engine mount, engine plate. I don't know. Otherwise, what could be... Oh, alright. We'll see. <laughs> Curiosity strikes again. Explore Ike. Well, we're going to be doing all sorts of other stuff around Ike, so sure. I think the first thing we need to do is take a look at this unfinished moon rover. I've already seen the orbits that things are in. Daftri is just in a low carbon orbit. The, that component is just in a low carbon orbit. And Elon, well, it doesn't really matter what orbit Elon is in around Minmus. That'll be easy enough. Uh, it's a polar orbit for that satellite. But I want to know what's up with this rover. So let's visit it. Wow, it's uh, not a small rover. I mean, well, it's got like 10 wheels, jeez. Well, it's not missing any wheels. <laughs> uh, hmm. Move the rover. So, what we don't have is power, I guess? We've got fuel cells, we've got fuel wells, so we do have, I do have power. Hmm. A command unit? That's what we need? Yeah, we don't have any way of sending commands, so it's unfinished because there's no core. I guess we just have to slap on a core, is that what we need to do? To move the rover, I guess. Am I seeing anything else that needs... Maybe power capacity. We've got the fuel cells, but they have power capacity via their electric charge there, so... We've got fuel and fuel cells for power. I'd prefer to have a solar panel on it. And seats, for that matter. It's not a very useful rover. There is the Science Junior, though. So, okay. I guess that's what we need to do. Okay, so here's what I've got so far. We've got the satellite and then a spacecraft to rescue Daffy, as well as Elon. So, we're also going to visit the component that that was 5.4 meters, but we're not going to try and pick it up yet. We want to see what it is. And so the way this works is this spacecraft will go over to Minmus. Uh, well, first of all, rescue Daffy from Kerbin orbit and then go over to Minmus. Place this satellite. The satellite will use its little ant engines and that little bit of fuel to get into the specified orbit. It's got the Science Junior, it's got the magnetometer. And of course can generate power and it's got a relay antenna just in case we could use that around Minmus. I don't think we've done that much around Minmus, so we might be able to take advantage of that. This of course is a rescue craft and so uh, ablator, parachutes, 
uh, docking port just in case. I mean, I didn't want to put a decoupler, so yeah, that might be helpful. While we are doing the initial rescue, we can use the high gain antenna here. Uh, that's uh, well, we'll rescue both Daffy and Elon first uh, before dumping the satellite. So, yep, that's that spacecraft. However, and I've just called it Pod 2 because I couldn't come up with anything better. Uh, the thing is, I would like to get that surface outpost on the moon too, but I think we're going to need to build that separately to make sure that we get all the things. And it's got the Delta V. And in that case, we'll put an engineer in here first. We definitely won't be putting Jeb and Valentina. But we'll put an engineer in here first. The engineer will EVA out to the lander, the surface outpost, land at the rover, and the surface outpost should have enough capacity to carry whatever equipment we want to add to the rover. So we'll send that with the engineer to the surface of the moon and then fix up the rover. But let's see if we, uh, if we can package that down here, but I think I want to build that in the SPH. Uh, so let's go with some, something new here, and I need a cupola. I mean, a lot of it is a lot like the Drez space, right? And here, <laughs> well, I am reminded why this was not such a good idea. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll simplify this somewhat. Let me just, yeah, this, I mean, it sort of worked, <laughs> but we don't need the large antenna antennae for the moon. That's probably helpful. Let's see what we need 17 capacity here and we need a docking port. Let's remember this time. Um, so crew 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 only. Uh, so instead of, well, in addition to this, we need another one of the hitchhiker storage containers. Oh, and we had packed all this stuff in for Drez. We can just use that. We can just keep that stuff in. And we just need one more hitchhiker storage container and this. And so now we should have capacity for 17. Okay, well, as it turns out, it probably wasn't necessary to do this in the SPH, though. I wanted to open the Dres base in it because I've built it as a more conventional lander anyway. And that's just to save us from some of the trouble that we have with the Dres base. But also allowed me to make it stouter. Otherwise, it was getting a little bit too long. And so I wanted to make it stouter. And we used these Mark 1 crew cabins to make sure it didn't get too tall here. And obviously put the fuel on the side. So Terriers are providing a little bit more thrust than I would want. If we take a look at the moon delta uh, thrust weight ratio, it's 4.32. And that's with all the fuel. Once it drains the fuel, it'll have a higher thrust weight ratio, 8 and such. So we'll have to throw down quite a lot at near the end. And yeah, that's not ideal. I don't like to have to throw down to 10% or anything like that. We've got lights, we've got antennae, we've got a docking port. I decided to go with that clampatron there uh, so that it's a little bit more stable when connecting up with the craft that we've already got in the VAB. Uh, power, solar panels, I put the little uh, dumplings just for the heck of it. We've got ladder. We've got, it's a sort of like a tower sort of situation here. And inside, we've got a control unit here, a probodobodyne hex. We've got work lamp, we've got fuel cylinder just for the heck of it. I decided that maybe it would want the scanning arms for the rovers, you know, those are helpful. Four EVA, uh, EVA repair kits, a surface scanning module, and some science things. And of course in here we have the surface science stuff. And we've got another, you know, let's just toss in more EV. I mean, I'm sh I don't know whether they're necessary or not or helpful. Oh, uh, can we get one of those command chairs? We don't, we haven't unlocked the command chairs yet. We'll have to send that separately. So that'll be a different occasion. Uh, we should probably give it an antenna, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's got an antenna. It's already got a high gain antenna, but we might as well pack an extra. Uh, oops, click and drop. Uh, so we've got that and we might as well get some more EV repair kits. I don't know what the experiment kit does. I'll toss one in and we'll see. There's this conformal storage unit, but that's so low capacity. I don't, we'll have to 
feel our way through that to see whether it's really important or not. I'll get four of these. We're gonna have a serious base here. And why not? Here, we'll get uh, EVA experiments. So, that's... Our cargo is a large part of our cost here. So this is going to go off to the moon with the engineer and it's going to do that on its own. Meanwhile, the pod and the satellite are going to go off to Minmus. And yep, that's the idea. So now we have to put it all together. Okay, I've had a weird sort of glitchy thing going on here. I loaded pod 2. Okay, let me move this up. Okay, and I put the moon tower here. Okay, that's all right. Let me get rid of that shroud. And when I moved it up before... Oh, see? It disappeared. It all disappeared like it got deleted. That's not good. <laughs> hmm. Are we, like, pressing against some limit? Maybe I should go this way around. Let's see. I don't know. Maybe it's because the window is there. Let me just move this up first. Then I don't have to move it up. But that's... Oops, wrong thing. That's not right, is it? It's not supposed to be like that. Um, combo mission. Well, I'll call it in honor of Elon. Elon combo mission. It is, shall we say, uh, delightfully counterintuitive. Anyway, um, actually, it's not very counterintuitive. I should have gone with something more counterintuitive in honor of Elon. I'm sure this will be aerodynamically perfect. <laughs> I'm sure this will be wonderful. Okay, so now we have to get our launcher on, assuming that everything is not gonna disappear on me. Hold on, I've saved it. Let me try and move it. It did it disappeared again. And, you know, it's gone from staging. It's not like the parts just disappeared. It got deleted, basically. But the price is still there. Very peculiar. Very peculiar. Well, we can't move it around in the VAB, apparently. A skipper is probably warranted. Two bobcats would be cheaper, though. And give us more thrust. But be heavier. It's a interesting call. I guess we can examine this situation. So we're on vacuum delta V, uh, yeah, delta V, and 80 kilonewtons there with the skipper. I mean, 80 tons with the skipper and 1,582 meters per second. We will need some way of mounting. Well, uh, just one bobcat is less, and two bobcats would be even less. So it's less cost, but it's gonna give us less delta V. It'll give us more thrust weight ratio though, but probably that's the vacuum already. Uh, so it'll be 1.02 ish. Interestingly, moving it down works. That doesn't make it disappear. Moving it up. Okay, well, now it seems to be okay. It likes having the bobcats. Don't ask me why. Well, can we get away with using the really awesome SRBs they've given us now? Let's see. They're 9,000 a pop, and after we separate them... Oh, that's not enough thrust-to-weight ratio left in the core, though. Well, we could reduce their... thrust... so that they last longer. But we have to make sure we get off the ground here. 1.24, and then when they decouple... and Oh, we need to put these back down. We can get it up to 0.9. A lot of the delta V is being used here, so maybe that's okay. We could go with six boosters, but we've sort of gone with uh, four-way symmetry up here, so I'd rather not. It'll hurt our thrust-to-weight ratio after the couple, but I think I will go with adding fuel up here. And then cross-feeding it in. We are going to be launching with a single engineer. I mean, we'll put the engineer in the Mark II command pod initially, and there's a possibility of aborting uh, with the parachutes and all, if necessary. 
it's saying 0.77 in vacuum right now because we added those tanks. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't go conformal with it and just use regular nose cones. But possibly it'll be alright if we toss it up high enough initially. Thinking about whether the mainsails with some fuel tanks would be better. We could probably just go with... Well, these have a fair amount of thrust, but we could probably go with fewer... Well, with less fuel with the mainsails. And... But at 13,000 a piece, and then we have to add the fuel tanks too. And then there's the twin bore, which is 17,000, which is the cost of basically two of these. And it provides 2,000 kilonewtons. These provide 1,700 kilonewtons each. But of course, it'll take less fuel, but that much less fuel? Maybe. It's close. I'd have to check it out, but this is cooler anyway. I wanted the four-way symmetry. Oh, it disappeared again. Good thing I saved first. Gosh, it's weird. Okay, that's nominal. Separate. That's not quite the way we want it to be. And then there's so that's a whole staging mess beyond that. So anyway, we're going to have to see how this works. It is a good question whether it's gonna work at all. We are going to put one Kerbal in, it will be an Engineer, it will be Sidwise. No, Arnard has less, uh, wait, Daffle has less. So Daffle is our least experienced Engineer at the moment. Now do we want to send our least experienced Engineer to do the stuff on the moon? I don't know, but we don't have any that's like six stars or, well, we don't have any that's two stars or anything. Where are our other engineers? We've got... Bill is out at Duna. Oh, we can see now that Elon is a pilot and Daftry is a scientist, so we know that ahead of time. Forgot we could check that here. So yeah, as far as assigned engineers, it's just Bill around Duna. And Bill didn't have any stars anyway. I brought the mission outside, but it occurred to me belatedly that I had never put any solar panels on the pod itself while I put solar panels on the satellite and the station. Why is this one sort of halfway open anyway? Weird. Anyway, we'll copy those and get a pair on here, and maybe now we're ready to go. That's sort of sticking out too. Um, Alright, things are weird, but let's... Bring this out to the launch pad again with the same crew. All right. Okay, well, there's no particular launch window. And so we can just go ahead and launch when we're in daylight. Let's just do that. But I want to see about that component first and then rescue Daftry. Daftry. That's a tough one. Name-wise, I mean. Uh, we'll go one more. Okay, Daftry is ahead of us. I oh, know uh, the components ahead of us, and so we'll visit that first. Daffle and Daftry. All right, SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Pretty brilliant morning. Very nice sun out. Hefty rocket. I'll let it go up a bit before starting to turn or anything. I've got control from the pod. It's probably for the best. Okay, let's get a lean in. We're aiming to be a bit steep this time. Because the uh, core does not have a very high thrust weight ratio after the boosters separate. Probably didn't need to go that steep. This is Kerbin, not Earth. But Alright. Flattening out despite the apparent heat. Okay, booster set. Oh, they sort of were a little bit askew. Alright. Well, still good. And we have plenty of time. It's uh, 3 minutes and 8 seconds, it looks like. And we've got 2 minutes and 30 seconds to apoapsis, so that's fine. We can just flatten out. Maybe even go a little bit lower. 
because we're not going to need all this delta V in order to get to orbit. We'll use the remainder in order to help the base out, get it over to the moon. We'll separate off the top, of course, because that's going to Minmus. It. Well, first it's going to rescue people, and then go over to Minmus. Now remember, uh, Daffala is actually going to go into the, mo uh, the cupola here, so that we can maintain control over that. There's no... Hmm. I wonder how bad it is that there's no pilot. Okay, well that's a messy, messy orbit. We're gonna let something catch up with us, and then we'll see what it is and figure it out after that. We'll go with the component first. I should have put a control unit on the on the big lander thing. We had one before, but I removed it because we were changing the control point of this to forward instead of or top cupola side instead of trying to control it from where it was for the Duna base. Okay, we should be able to switch over to it. There it is. Yeah, yeah, it's an engine plate. It just, and it's a five meter one. It just misread it as five by five by five. Uh, it doesn't say it, uh, the dimensions in this list, but yeah. Yep, I guess that's just a default thing for it. So, well, Heat shield wise, that's pretty easy, right? As far as if we claw it, it should be easy to bring it down. We'll think about that later. Now let's focus on Daftry. Well, that is pretty close, 0.3 kilometers. You know, there's too big a stage to handle fine adjustments with. We're gonna have to have Daftry do a little bit of the work here. I think. Let me go over to Daftry. Daftry's in one of these onions. Okay, Daftry's a scientist though. Maybe I should just send all this to Minmus first. And then grab Elon and Elon can join our engineer Daffle on the moon. Then we can definitely control the moon landing more proper. Well, I don't know about definitely, but they'll be helpful. So maybe change of plans. We're gonna send it all, since we have the stage here anyway, we'll just send it all to Minmus first. A Minmus to the moon transfer is not very hefty after all. And yeah, we have only limited crew control. If we separate it off, we're probably going to be not so good. Anyway, that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. So we're going to just keep it all together. And we've answered question one, which is the nature of the component. We have rescued Daffry, and now we're going to Minmus. And then we'll try to do a Minmus to Moon transfer afterwards. Minmus is still off-plane. We're six degrees off, so we're just going to do an off-plane transfer right by the ascending node. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to change target. Okay, so that's an off-plane transfer to Minmus, and we would like to get minimal inclination difference to Elon. Yeah, we'll have to do a mid-course adjustment to do the rest. Okay. Okay, and go. There's, of course, one fringe benefit of having the engines on the tail like this instead of having it like the spark engines on Duna Base. Not Duna Base, Dres Base. We do have to make sure there's no crossfeed there. Let's disable crossfeed. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, just a little bit more. Let's take a look at what's actually happening. We don't even have an encounter. Oh, there it is. Okay, well, that's good enough there. And then we do a mid-course adjustment, if it'll actually let me. Okay, and go. That Too much. <laughs> Whoops. Overdid it. What did that actually do? Ah, uh, oh yeah, well, that's too much. All right, making orbit. 
Okay, a loose orbit is fine for now because I want to pop off the little satellite. So decouple. Have we done the magnetometer reading here? No, we haven't. Let's transmit that. Uh, we don't have that much electric charge. Let's see. Oh, just barely. Okay. So we got a magnetometer reading. But what we need to do is sort of get into that orbit. And for that, we need to be at either the ascending or descending node. So we've got a lot of delta V, though, so that's fine. Overall, that seems to be a good plan. Um, let's switch back to over here. So we've got some delta V here to rendezvous with Elon. Okay, so I would like to adjust the inclination and bring our orbit further down. Oh, you know, that's pretty close, but we've got sort of this gap going. Uh, we'll work with this for now. That's pretty much in line, and we've got some sort of thing going, but we want to close this gap here that we left. So we'll do this maneuver first. Okay, that should be good enough. Yep, and then later on we will do still a little bit of inclination difference, but it's not as severe. And we will do a bring the orbit down burn there. That okay, so we're actually the reverse of where I wanted to be, but let's do a minor radial adjustment then, and then we can be right. Okay, that'll be good enough. So, minor adjustment there. But let's hop back to the little probe. Just little ant engines. It's just one toroidal tank there. That donut, that's it. So now our orbit is like that. And over here, somewhere around here, we will fix up the remainder of that little inclination and then bring it down the rest of the way. We still have communication. And this is short enough burn so we don't have to worry too much about it. Burn. Okay, is that good enough? I don't even know how good we're matching the orbit, but it seems like it's not. We need to do a bit of a radial burn. Seems pickier than usual. Okay, there we go. We've got it. They didn't even uh, ask for the maintain stability thing. Well, I guess it counted as stable because I was only turning it a tiny bit. Okay, so we've got this one done. Let's go back to the Elon rescue mission. It's a shame I didn't put one of the small docking ports on this thing. Otherwise, I'd totally... Just have that bit rescue Elon and then, well, we could just EVA out. We could keep this in a high orbit and leave it alone. And then we could rescue Elon and then EVA out. Let's transfer our engineer daf Daffle, uh, transfer crew into the cupola there. Probably want Elon in the cupola eventually. And then we can separate off and then use this to rescue Elon because it has the core there. And then we don't have to use this thing's fuel all the time, but we better hope that this, because uh, after that I don't, can't transfer fuel into it. So we'll have to hope that it has all the fuel it needs for everything else. Interesting question, because it has to go over to the moon, make orbit around the moon, land on the moon at a specific location. Do I want to transfer some fuel into it? Maybe a little bit. I don't know, that makes me feel better. Of course, we probably have a fuel imbalance now. But, okay, decouple. So Daftry is going to use this pod to rescue Elon. Let me just check 
what kind of control we have over this mission ship. Because really we want to bring Elon back to get the contract complete, right? We don't want to have Elon go to the moon and not bring Elon back. So we'd have to send some other pod to fetch Elon after this. The thing is, we've actually got a core on the station. It's just, I mean, the base, it's inside the the hitchhiker container, that's all. If we had the engineer slap it on, then it'd be active, presumably, right? I don't even know how the whole slapping on thing works. Let's see if the engineer can do that and save us some trouble. But first, let's grab Elon. Okay, slowing down. Elon will have to EVA to this, like we did with Daftry. One of these lander cans. Okay. Wouldn't mind having one of those. Elon Kerman. Here we go. It begins. Okay, grab and board. All right. So we've got Elon, but let's take a look at the, what the engineer can do. 